Here we are today at uh, Calican Factory in Santiago de Compostela, Spain, where I am going to explain how the canometer system uh, works for everybody. I'm Domingo and I have been the developer and designer of this uh, system that I'm going to show you. First of all, I want to say this system includes a screen with high bright LEDs which can be seen during daylight. It includes also two timer gates to be attached to the jump structures and it also includes one small button panel from where you can access some of the additional functions that the system includes. I will show them to you slowly one by one. The whole system is transported with these bags that are also provided. They provide uh, safety for the system and they are easy to carry with you. A timer is a standard system that you can see in several places, but this one has been designed for dog courses, dog agility courses. So the timer gate provides several functionalities that are quite useful for these races. The timer, the gate, has uh, several uh, indicators that will help you during its function. First of all, we have a LED, which is in different colors depending on the battery. Once it is on, it will be green for full battery and it will turn orange or red depending on the level of the battery. Once it's red, it's the good time to charge the battery. There's a second LED orange this time that shows when the gate is correctly aligned with the reflector. If this alignment is not correct, this LED will not light. There's a third LED, color blue, that shows the connection between the timer gate and the screen. Once the timer gate is connecting somehow with the screen, sending any data, it will blink. The speed of the blink represents the connectivity status. If it blinks for some time, it means that the connection is not good, it's not perfect. Maybe your gate is too far from the screen, or maybe there is some kind of uh, noise in the environment that doesn't allow a perfect connection. But usually what you see is just a small blink, which means that connection is great. More things that this system provides is uh, once uh, the system is not correctly aligned, it will tell you through a message that shows on the screen. This could be the case of a gate that is not correctly placed, or it can be the case of a gate that has been thrown to the floor by a dog during its run. Once the gate detects that this alignment is no longer available, it will show it through a message on the screen that everybody will be able to read check sensor cells. This uh, doesn't mean that the second gate doesn't work. The second gate will be able to start or stop the time course uh, without any other problem. For seeing it, you just have to power off this gate while you install it correctly again. This gate is provided of an external battery, so in case the battery uh, is empty, you can change it easily. The battery, once full, can withstand more than 24 hours of continuous operation. This is more than enough for a two-day uh, course. The structure is attached to the gate, to the jump, through uh, configurable screws that allow you to attach it to different widths of uh, jump structures. These uh, are easily uh, installed and once in their place you don't have to touch them because this gate is sliding up and down so you can configure it for different dock heights. This is easily done through this screw here that will allow you to move it up or down and close it again at any even height. The good height for installation is that the upper part of the jump coincides is at the same height that the lower part of the gate. In 
this case, this would be the perfect height for this timing gate. The timing gate is composed of two photocells that one of them is located here and is the one that will detect most dogs and another second one for safety is located in the upper area so it can detect those dogs that jump a little bit more than average. The timing system has been tested and it has been designed also to withstand uh, rain. In rain environments it works perfectly and this rain doesn't affect the wireless signal between the gate and the screen. It also withstands high temperature environments such as we have in Spain in summer but also cold temperatures as uh, we systems that we have in Sweden or Lithuania. In case you forgot to load the batteries provided, you could simply connect the screen direct to the gate through a cable that could connect in this very same connector. The screen in its back has two slots for connecting this connector. One extra that we can provide for big competitions is a third set of uh, time gate that will provide you the capability to sense intercourse uh, times. This is quite interesting for those contests that are uh, at the highest of competition level and each second counts. As I said first, the screen is composed of uh, timing and also an area for penalties and other type of information. Those are controlled through the button panel. Here. This button panel, which has uh, six buttons, allows you to access to the other functions of the screen. For example, you can add penalties like faults or refusals. Or in case you need uh, a misjudgment, you can remove these faults or refusals. You could directly eliminate a dog or you could uneliminate it. You could also, from the button panel, reset the screen in case it would be needed. And you can access to uh, the countdown once the referee uh, uses his whistle to sign on the start of the course. This is done by pressing a button 15 seconds to start the race. Once this countdown is used, the gate will activate it and start the count if it, it, it must. But if 15 seconds have passed, your dog has penalty and time has already started, the gate will ignore its first activation and will not stop the clock. Another function that the timing system provides you is to show for the contestants the walkthrough time. You can select from 7 to 10 minutes how long will it take to turn off all the LEDs. I will start it with a 7 minute configuration and now uh, all the LEDs are on and it will be slowly turning off. Each area is signed with uh, the number of the minutes which is running 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 and once all the LEDs are finished time is gone and end will be shown in the center of the screen. This is useful for the contestants because they will be able to see this screen from whenever they are in the course. You can configure it from 7 to 10 minutes. Now talking about configuration, we access to that through our button panel. Let me finish the countdown and we will access to the configuration items. In this menu we can configure several things. First thing we can configure is the language, English or Spanish. Second thing we can configure is the ring where we are measuring times. This is due to the capability of our canometer to measure times in several rings at the same time. Each canometer is configured with a different uh, code so they don't interfere to one another. You can run contests of four rings simultaneously without uh, problems of one timing gate stopping another chronometer. They both, uh, all of them, function with different codes and different frequencies so 
this will not happen. You can also, so uh, you can change the guard time of the system. Guard time can be configured to from one to nine seconds, and it's the time between two activations of the timer. I will configure it to two seconds, which is, by the way, the default time, and I will explain this to you. This is the time between two activations of the gate that will start or stop the timing system. For example, if once I start, I can activate it much times, and up to two seconds, it will not activate. If this guard time would be four seconds, now it can, I can activate it a lot of times, and until we get to four seconds, it will not stop. That is guard time, and you can configure from one to nine seconds, and it has been done by this, like this, because sometimes we have seen that the start gate and end gate of a course are close together, and some dogs jump both of them, resetting the counter and losing the time. Now you can configure it and simply ignore this problem. More things we can configure are the work time, as we saw, work fluid from seven to ten time to ten minutes, violence of the screen low or high, this is low, I will show you high. High is used during sunny and bright days when the direct light of the sun is hitting the screen and uh, you still want to see it. This time you use high, but I will continue with low. Now the sixth item you can configure is to show centiseconds or milliseconds on the screen. This screen the system canometer uh, really is working with milliseconds, although usually only centiseconds are used in the contest. But maybe your contest needs a little bit more uh, of uh, uh, capability, and then you can set it to milliseconds. I will show you that. Now the system is running on milliseconds. Once the dog starts, it starts running as everywhere, and once it stops, it will show the milliseconds from the start. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is the capability of this timing system to connect to different managing softwares for the contest. Right now, we have it connected to Agility Contest. This software manages a big contest up to four or five rings, and it has managed, for example, our last uh, World Series Championship in Zaragoza. Uh, the capabilities, in this case, allow that everything that happens on the screen is sent to the software, including timing, which is the most important one, and also uh, penalties as applied through the button panel. But also, you can manage the screen from the system, from the software. This software is run on a computer and has a tablet uh, application that allows you to do this. From this tablet, you can send faults, for example. You can uh, send uh, fusions. You can eliminate a lot. Or you could reset the screen from here. 